there are no fundamental advantages. You know, unless you have a monopoly. This is Jensen Huang in January of 2003. Little did he know that 20 years later, he would run the world's biggest company. The leader of America's first $4 trillion company is now the ninth richest person in the world. NVIDIA is now the world's most valuable company. Jensen Huang is the CEO of NVIDIA. He has a net worth of over $160 billion and he's leading the AI revolution. And greatness is not intelligence. Greatness comes from character and character is informed out of smart people. It's formed out of people who suffered. And Jensen suffered more than anybody. For over 20 years, he bet his whole company on AI long before it was mainstream. And he nearly went bankrupt three separate times. However, it's finally paying off. We are at the beginning of the AI revolution. Jensen Wong emigrated from Taiwan to the United States as a child. As a teenager, Jensen waited tables and washed dishes at a local Denny's. In his 20s, he began designing microprocessors. Then he went to Stanford to get his master's degree. But despite his promising career, Jensen felt the need to start something of his own. And so in 1993, at the same Denny's with co-founders Chris Malachowski and Curtis Prem, he imagined a new kind of computer company. They originally wanted to name their company Envision until they discovered that there was a toilet paper brand with the same name. And so at the last moment, they changed the company name to NVIDIA. They managed to pull together just $40,000 and officially incorporated the company on April 5th, 1993. He believed the future of computing was not going to be dominated by general purpose CPUs. Instead, he imagined a future of accelerated computing. A future where specialized processors work alongside CPUs to tackle the heaviest computing tasks. But during a time when Intel was on top of the world, this idea sounded absolutely crazy. As Jensen later said himself, a startup that worked on GPUs, a graphical processing unit, was an unfundable idea. Not only did it require massive amounts of R&D, but also there was no market for it. It was a zero billion dollar market. He managed to convince Don Valentine, the founder of Sequoia Capital, to invest into Nvidia. He was hesitant to invest at first, but one of his friends told him, give this kid money and figure out if it's going to work. And just like that, the journey of Nvidia has begun. In that same Denny's booth, which now by the way has a plaque saying, the NVIDIA booth, Jensen and his two co-founders launched a multi-trillion dollar company. NVIDIA's early days were anything but smooth. And that's because NVIDIA's first product attempted a novel technical approach. While all of their rivals rendered 3D images with triangles, NVIDIA decided to build their graphics chips to use quadrilaterals. And this backfired spectacularly. Just as Nvidia was about to release its chip, Microsoft announced that Windows would standardize its graphics software on triangles. And so overnight, Nvidia's strategy was made obsolete. In order to save the company, he had to fire half of his employees. Jensen then took every remaining dollar and funneled it into a new project. A project that had only one goal, redesign the Nvidia chip to support triangles. Nvidia was just 30 days away from running out of money. The Riva 128 was a hit and it sold over a million units in the first four months, giving Nvidia the revenue they desperately needed. However, this close call left a permanent mark on Jensen Huang's leadership style. It instilled in Nvidia a culture of urgency and focus. In fact, Jensen began opening every single company all hands meeting by saying, our company is 30 days away from bankruptcy. By 1999, just six years after its founding, Nvidia launched the GeForce 256, the first product to be called a GPU. The GeForce 256 was a revelation for PC gaming, delivering unprecedented graphic performance. It instantly became Nvidia's flagship and it helped the company go public later that year. However, Jensen's ambitions were far beyond video games. And so just a few months after going public, Nvidia began exploring other uses for the GPUs beyond just entertainment. The company began venturing into professional graphics and 3D design, and also some engineering. Jensen Huang believed that Nvidia must always keep venturing into the unknown. He refused to let the company grow complacent by staying in its own profitable market. Jensen thinks one of the biggest mistakes entrepreneurs make is wanting to build a company in an already large market. This is no different than a startup. You're supposed to build a startup. You're supposed to create a startup before the market grows. 
Instead, Jensen always looks for zero billion dollar markets, which is industries and opportunities that everyone else is ignoring. This is also what Peter Thiel calls zero to one. One example in the early days of Nvidia was scientific computing. In the mid 2000s, Jensen and his team noticed that a lot of scientists and researchers were beginning to experiment with GPUs. This was not a lucrative market. In fact, it barely existed. But nonetheless, Nvidia began supporting academics who were using graphics cards to accelerate physics simulations and math computations. Another similar risky bet was robotics. At the time, Jensen said, we are sure there are no customers in robotics, but that also meant no competition. It took over a decade, but that early pivot positioned the company to dominate the AI robotics market. Perhaps the boldest bet Nvidia has ever made was the creation of CUDA. CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture. It turns Nvidia's GPUs into programmable processors for any computing task. But when CUDA was first released in 2007, the response was underwhelming. At the time, multi-core CPUs were the mainstream way of speeding up software, and many doubted the necessity of a niche computing platform. The team at NVIDIA literally had to teach the market how to use CUDA. They even began traveling the country and giving lectures at colleges explaining what CUDA is and how to work with it. It took nearly four years of constant work to convince developers to start using CUDA. But in hindsight, CUDA turned out to be a genius play. It gave Nvidia an ecosystem mode no other company could easily replicate. Developers who learned how to use CUDA could run their code on any GPU from 2006 into the future, which created a virtuous cycle of more and more software and more and more users using the Nvidia ecosystem. This was Jensen Huang's way of preparing Nvidia for a future that nobody else saw coming. A future full of AI. The world wasn't convinced in 2007, but Jensen was, and he was about to be proven right. Around 2011, a few researchers discovered something astonishing. If you trained a neural network on GPUs instead of CPUs, the neural net began to learn way faster. And in 2012, a pivotal moment occurred when a small team of three people from University of Toronto built AlexNet. On the team were three legends of the AI field, Alex Krzyzewski, Ilya Satskever and Jeffrey Hinton. The thing they've built was an image recognition neural network on top of Nvidia's CUDA software. They called this AlexNet and they used it to win an image recognition competition. In fact, a win is an understatement. They absolutely demolished everyone. I mean, the team at number two wasn't even close. And just like that, this AlexNet breakthrough started off the deep learning revolution. And that was all that Jensen needed to see. Practically overnight, Nvidia's focus shifted from 3D graphics to artificial intelligence. Now, many experts in the industry thought that deep learning would soon hit a ceiling, but Jensen remained convinced. He said, if we don't build it, we don't know how far deep learning can scale. In 2015 and 2016, the company released new GPU models. First Maxwell, then Pascal, which helped accelerate the rise of deep learning even further. And Jensen even began addressing his keynotes, not by talking about video games and 3D graphics, but about deep learning breakthroughs, from cell driving to speech recognition. A defining moment came in 2016. OpenAI, a new research lab created by Elon Musk, Sam Altman, and a few others, was created with one goal in mind, build artificial general intelligence. They needed serious computing power, but as a non-profit startup, they lacked the resources. And so Jensen stepped in personally. In August, 2016, he hand delivered the first NVIDIA DGX-1 to OpenAI's tiny office in San Francisco. The DGX-1 was a tiny AI supercomputer and rather than sell it, Jensen decided to donate it for free. A gesture that spoke volumes. And what followed was a series of AI breakthroughs. AI models that crushed competitive video games, software for controlling robotic arms, and even the first GPT, Generative Pre-trained Transformer. In each case, when researchers were asked how they managed to achieve these breakthroughs, one common pattern emerged. They used NVIDIA GPUs. By 2022, AI reached an inflection point with the release of ChatGPT. Virtually overnight, AI went mainstream and the demand for NVIDIA GPUs went through the roof. The company's stock price began growing faster than any other company in history. NVIDIA reached $1 trillion market cap, then $2 trillion, then $3, then $4, and today standing at well over $4.5 trillion of enterprise value. This is why over 78% of NVIDIA employees are millionaires. And over half of people who work at NVIDIA 
have a net worth of 25 million dollars or higher. To call Nvidia an overnight success would be a big mistake. Getting here took over 30 years of countless risks and surviving disasters that nearly killed the company. It's the story of believing in something unconventional that few others did. Whether it was the notion of GPUs in 1993, the gamble on CUDA in 2006, or the bet on AI before anyone else. As Jensen Huang says himself, greatness is not intelligence. Greatness comes from character, and character is formed in people who have suffered.